In this video, I will talk about various programming languages that we support on, in Compute Canada. Of course, we have the compilers for the traditional HPC programming compiled languages such as C, C++, various versions of Fortran. We also support Python, R, Java, MATLAB. The thing that you have to remember is that not all languages are built equal in terms of performance. Uh, so because we're talking about computing on very large scale, if you're using a language that is not efficient, then you'll be wasting resources on a very large scale as well. So for example, a native Python code, if you're doing native loops or native arithmetic, will be a factor of 100, 200 perhaps slower than a similar optimized code in a compiled language such as C, C++, and Fortran. And that is a very huge difference because uh, if you have a code that was just written very inefficiently in Python, then it makes absolutely no sense to run it on a high performance computing system because you'll be wasting a lot of uh, resources. So uh, that does not mean that you cannot use Python in HPC, you can. Pre-compiled libraries such as uh, SciPy, NumPy, Pandas, many others, uh, typically were written in a compiled language like, like C or C++ themselves. And these libraries uh, were optimized uh, when uh, they were compiled. And they are in fact very fast compared to native Python. So that means if you're uh, running Python code that spends most of its time not inside uh, your own Python, uh, Python lines, but inside of a pre-compiled Python package, then your code can actually be uh, quite fast and you can run it on a Compute Canada uh, system. Uh, in Python, uh, there are various uh, compiler projects. Unfortunately, right now, none of these projects uh, manage to produce a compiler that works for all scenarios. So uh, some compilers work only on a subset of uh, Python commands. Some compilers require you to build some extensions uh, like C style extensions in a code, etc. So unfortunately, right now, there is no single uh, universal Python compiler that will just make your code uh, much faster automatically. Uh, so if you are thinking about writing a new code, uh, and especially if it's a very large code, uh, if it's going to run for you know many, many hours or many days, uh, then we really highly recommend you to spend uh, a lot of time thinking about uh, what language you should use to uh, write this project in because compile languages are much faster than uh, script scripting languages. So the ideal choice would be things like C, C++, Fortran, uh, uh, perhaps Julia or Chapel, but not the scripting languages. R is even slower than Python. Uh, but again, everything I just said about Python applies to R as well. If your code uh, spends most of its time inside a pre-compiled and optimized R package, then it can be uh, quite fast. Uh, so MATLAB and Java are also somewhat slow compared to compiled languages, but then if you have a large code written in MATLAB and Java, you can run it uh, in Compute Canada. You just have to be aware of this performance gap. So typically we find that MATLAB codes are a factor of five or so slower than a similar code in a compiled language. And Java is anywhere from a factor of three to time, 10 times uh, slower than, uh, than a compiled code. Uh, one of the exercises uh, that we're going to do in this course is uh, benchmarking uh, scripting and compile codes. Uh, you're going to take a code to compute Pi uh, in C and in Python, and uh, you will run it on uh, as a compute job or on our training cluster, and you will uh, compare the run times, and you will find that the C code is much, much faster uh, than uh, exactly the same uh, Python code. I already talked briefly about a parallel programming environment. Uh, so we do support all the usual uh, parallelization uh, frameworks and, and libraries. Uh, so OpenMP is industry standard for shared memory programming. Uh, so in OpenMP, you launch, you launch additional threads. Uh, each thread will run on its own processor. And that way you can uh, parallelize and speed up your computations. But uh, the downside of OpenMP, the limitation, is that it can only scale to how many how many processes you have on a given node because it's shared memory by definition all these processes must have access to the same shared memory space so that means that an OpenMP code by design cannot scale to multiple uh, nodes on a cluster 
With MPI, the story is different. So MPI stands for message passing interface. And here you are sending messages between processes either on the same node or processes on different nodes. And an MPI code can actually run on multiple nodes. So that means it can scale to much, much bigger problem sizes than a typical OpenMP code. So OpenMP is a language extension. So it exists for, uh, well, in, in C, C++, and Fortran. It has to be supported by the compiler. But pretty much any compiler that we have installed, it does support OpenMP. MPI, on the other hand, is a library. And uh, it has APIs for lots of different programming languages. So C, C++, Fortran, Python, R, MATLAB, uh, many others. And MPI is really uh, the library that you want to use if you want to parallelize your existing code to run on, uh, on very large scale on multiple nodes. So both OpenMP and MPI have been around for the past quarter century. They're really industry standards uh, and they're widely used. So OpenMP is easy to use because it just involves a set of a set of compiler directives that you plug into your code to typically parallelize loops. And MPI is more difficult to use. It is a low level, but it is it is incredibly efficient because uh, it will essentially it can accommodate pretty much any problem type on a, a large uh, a large distributed memory system. We also support new languages, things like uh, Julia and Chapel. And in fact, in the summer school, we have separate courses for Julia parallel programming in, in, in Chapel and programming with a little bit of parallel programming in, in Julia as well. And uh, Chapel uh, is, is great because it was designed specifically for parallel programming on HPC systems. So that means that in Chapel, you can actually, with just a few lines of code, you can write a parallel code that can run on multiple processes on the same node or multiple nodes and multiple processes on each node. Uh, Julia has also some parallelism built in. It's simpler than Chapel parallelism. But uh, on the other hand, Julia is much more uh, popular than Chapel, just because a lot of people use Julia to program uh, multiple cores on their laptops and, and workstations. We also support things like Python Dusk. So Dusk is a Python library to enable a function or graph parallelism. And of course, we support all the usual uh, parallel programming uh, frameworks uh, for GPU, CUDA, OpenCL, and OpenACC. Uh, the three major compiler families we have are the Intel compiler, that's the commercial compiler, the open source GNU compiler, and then the commercial PGI compiler. So these tables uh, list you all the compiler names that you can use to compile uh, C, Fortran, and C++ codes. For example, if you are using the commercial Intel compiler, then to compile a serial C code, you will use the ICC command. To compile a serial Fortran code, you will use the ifort command. And to compile the serial C++ code, you will use the ICPC command. If you're compiling a shared memory OpenMP code, you will use uh, one of these commands with the uh, dash q openmp flag. If you want to compile an MPI parallel code for distributed memory usage, then you will use one of these uh, compiler names in the um, in the second column: MPI CC, MPI Ford, and MPI Capital CC. And the same for GNU compiler and the PGI compiler. And then to switch between uh, different compiler families and between different versions of the same compiler you will use the module command. Let me give you an example on the training cluster. Let me uh, log in to the training cluster right here. And let's see if I have, I have a TMP directory. So I'm going to uh, clean this directory. And let me create a new TMP directory. I will CD in there. And uh, here I have, uh, I'm going to copy a file from project uh, shared, the file is intro.hpc.zip. I'm copying it into the current directory. So that's the same zip file that you downloaded to get a copy of the slides. And then I'm going to unzip this file, unzip followed by the file name. And that, as you can see, expanded that file. I can actually remove that zip file. I don't need it anymore. And then I have, oops. And then I have the uh, codes uh, directory with uh, some number of codes in it, and then a copy of the PDF slides. Let me cd into the codes directory. And here I have a C code to compute pi, pi.c. 
this is a very simple algorithm to compute pi. It's actually not efficient at all. The point here is not to write an efficient code. The point here is to write a code that does a lot of computation because this is, well, we're going to use it for training purposes and for exercises. And so it computes pi through this summation with uh, 10 billion terms, which is quite a lot. Uh, let me switch, uh, let me check which uh, compilers I have. So the default uh, compiler in uh, my environment is Intel. I'm going to switch to the GNU compiler module. Let's check which GNU compilers I have. Module avail GCC. And I'm going to say module load. And I will load uh, this GNU compiler 5.4, which is actually the default one. You see there is a default, there is a letter D here. And uh, you can see that the OpenMPI dependency was reloaded specifically for GCC. Now I have action, uh, access to the uh, GCC compiler, uh, uh, compiler, and if I type which GCC, it'll actually tell me it's going to use this 5.4.0 that I just loaded a few moments ago. Now I'm going to uh, say GCC followed by the name of the C code, and then minus O followed by the name of the executable. I'm going to call the executable serial. I can call it whatever I want, but I just want to distinguish it from the parallel codes that I'm going to compile in a few minutes. So let me hit enter. As you can see, it complains. It says undefined reference to POW. So POW is a mathematical function that is used in PI.C. And what we can do, we actually have two options. We can either link to the math library, minus L stands for an external library, and M for mathematical library. So that will link the math library and we just compile the code. No error means typically that a code is compiled. Another option uh, we can we can take is type GCC minus capital O2. And minus capital O stands for optimization. So there are various optimization flags you can pass to a compiler. Typically is uh, one of either minus O0, minus O1, minus O2, and minus O3. And uh, minus O3 is the most aggressive optimization, so it will do lots of vectorization and will try to produce um, the code which uh, that is as fast as possible for a given uh, processor. But we really recommend using minus O2 because minus O3 sometimes will try to optimize your code too much and sometimes it will lead to problems. Minus O2 is really a sweet spot to produce as fast code that will, will work without problems. So uh, GCC minus O2 and what a minus O2 will do underneath, it will also link to the math library. Okay. So uh, now we have uh, serial code, which is an executable. If we type ls minus l on serial, you can see that it is an executable code. So it has minus x so that an executable can actually run it. And if I run it like that, it will run Right here on the login node, I'm going to say control C to uh, quit it. You don't want to run anything CPU intensive on the login node because, as I mentioned, on HPC classes, login nodes are really meant for uh, compiling, for looking at uh, the source code, etc., text files, but not for anything CPU intensive because running anything intensive will make uh, that login node slow to not just to you, but to everybody else who is, uh, who is using the system right now. Okay, so uh, what you can do is you can actually submit this job to uh, the Slum job scheduler, and we're going to do that in uh, in a future uh, session. So right now I'm just looking at the compilation. So here I compile the serial code, and then next I'm going to compile the OpenMP code using minus f OpenMP flag for GNU. Okay, so the OpenMP code is called sharedpy.c. And it's exactly the same algorithm, except that the loop, the loop is now enclosed into this uh, pragma uh, statement, which will basically parallelize my code with OpenMP. It will launch multiple threads, and each thread will run on its own processor. So to compile it, I'm going to say GCC minus O2 minus F OpenMP shared pi dot C minus O, and I'm going to call it... Um, I'm going to call it uh, OpenMP. OpenMP is just here the name of the executable. And now I have two executables, serial and OpenMP. And finally, let me comp compile this code with MPI. So because it is C, I'm going to use MPICC command right here for the GNU compiler. So let me type MPICC 
minus O2. And now the name of the, uh, now the code is distributed pi.c minus O, and I'm going to call the executable MPI. Now we have three executables, serial, OpenMP, and MPI. And these are actually, if you take a look at their size in bytes, you see that serial is the smallest one because it does not have any parallel code. OpenMP is slightly larger, it has some logic for uh, shared memory parallelism. And then MPI is even larger because it has some logic for MPI message passing uh, interface.